to move on to institutions of higher learning, learning of course. Uh, District 145 boasts three of those, Georgia Military College, Central Georgia Technical, and of course, Georgia College, one we're at right now. What specifically would you do, and this is for Mr. Williams, Mr. Williams, what would you specifically do to create jobs so that students stay in the region after graduation? Working with the local government, the county commission, city council to attract industry here to Baldwin County. We have a unique opportunity. We have, we have one of six mega sites in the state located here in Baldwin County that has direct rail access to Savannah. So goods could be manufactured, produced, loaded into train boxcars, and carried directly to Savannah to the port for exporting, of course. Central State Hospital redevelopment this past year, over $60 million has been spent there. The um, Youth Life, the um, other groups that have come in, they've created it. By the end of the year, they will have created around 500 jobs. So Baldwin County, Millersville is growing. <coughs> um, we have more opportunity and other people looking to expand the kitchen Central State Hospital, the kitchen out there, those facilities is the largest in the world. They have more uh, capability of food production than any other location there in the world. And there's a company that is in the process of buying that uh, kitchen and also one of the adjoining buildings so they can do the hydroponic uh, fast freeze drying foods so they can be shipping those overseas and even here throughout the United States. So things are happening. Uh, the one thing I want to touch on is the, uh, the education, the cost of education. What it costs um, is just, we, w we want to work on that. So there are other details there too. Mr. Gibbon? Well, I want everyone to know that I served on the Board of Trustees here at Georgia College <coughs> and at GMC and uh, when I was in the Senate uh, on the Higher Education uh, committee and will attempt to do the same thing when I go to uh, to the House of Representatives. Uh, first of all, uh, legislators can't bring jobs into a community. That's not their job. That's not their responsibility. That's why each in each community they have an economic development uh, board and and executive director. Uh, what I would do, I will work with those. Uh, two uh, communities here in, uh, in Putnam and in uh, 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 Bowen. I will work with the State Department mm -hmm. of uh, Economics and uh, Economic Development and, and Tourism. And one of the things that I would do after the, after the legislative session, I will conduct a economic development summit in bringing all of those communities together to help determine what their strategic view and outlook for, for, for Bowen and Putnam counties, and then uh, you know we are we are moving in that direction. I'm the only person sitting here that have bought, brought jobs into the community and economic development when I was a mayor. I worked when I was a state senator to help bring those in to the community. I didn't go and touch and foot field to bring them in myself because once again, legislators don't, don't do that. All right, Mr. Williams, you have one minute. I served as also a county commissioner in the uh, early 90s and served as chairman for two years. During that time, we were actively trying to bring jobs into Baldwin County. I have a relationship with the city and the county and with combined efforts, the governor has endorsed me Lieutenant Governor, the Speaker of the House, the Secretary of State, and many others, the Republican Caucus Chair, the floor leader. And uh, with those contacts, we can have the opportunity to make Baldwin County grow. We're at an opportune time with the completion of the Fall Line Freeway. The State Highway has now started back widening 441 and Highway 24. So we're going to be right at the crossroads of Georgia. 
and transportation is about to start coming through. We're going to be uh, better access to the interstates, so transportation has held us back in the past in the lack of transportation. Mr. Williams, I think your time is up. Okay. Mr. Griffin, one minute. Well, uh, Mr. Williams brag about who's endorsed him. That's, that's good. I just want him to, rem I want the people out here to know when the <coughs> governor came down and endorsed him, he went to a private dinner out on the lake with some of the, the elites in our community. When the, the Speaker of the House and some of those other people he spoke to, they came uh, uh, to an airport hangar here and with the elites again. They didn't invite you and I and the rest of the people out on the southern side of uh, Baldwin County and up in uh, Putnam County along MLK where some of the lower, uh, the working class people live. So I want to just make that clear. When I uh, kick my campaign off, I kick my campaign off in a public place and invited everybody to, to come. Now, the Speaker of the House, the Lieutenant Governor, and I served together in the State, uh, in the state Senate. He, he doesn't have a uh, carte blanche on the people in Atlanta that, that he knows. I know a lot of people in Atlanta and in the legislature and in the business community also. My arms reach deep. And not only in Atlanta, all the way into Washington, D.C., and I Mr. will Mr. bring Gibbon, all of that to bear. That's all the time we have for that. Okay. Uh, moving on now, we'll go ahead and... I'd like to respond to that. Uh, Mr. Williams, go ahead. Okay. Mr. Griffin will also get another minute to respond. <coughs> that's fine. The home of the elite is people that own chalk mines. The people at the airport hangar own Arcella Manufacturing and Mining. They employ thousands of people here in middle Georgia. This was not a campaign kickoff. These were fund raisers, F-U-N-D raisers. That's what they were for, was to raise funds for this campaign. And they did, and people were invited. We had a public breakfast that the public was invited to in Putnam County last Monday with the Secretary of State. We ran ads in the paper, we had it on the radio. We had people from Baldwin County, people from but Putnam County to attend. And we had a great time. We will do more things. Um, just because it was at the airport, at a hangar, that this man owns his own airplane, and he employs thousands of people here in middle Georgia, and he has created jobs. That's how we're going to bring jobs and industry to Millersville, Baldwin County, because we have the friends in the right places. But the Mr. Governor, Williams, that's your time. Mr. Griffin, okay. one minute. I have no problem with the elite, okay? But I also am concerned about those that are not elite. Mr. Williams <coughs> stated that those were fundraisers and not a kickoff. Yes, they were fundraisers, but they, they were invitational. The governor is the governor of all of us. When he came in down and endorsed uh, uh, Rick, why did he come in a public space, like in front of the courthouse or here at Georgia College, and endorse him. No, he went to a private fundraiser where they are paying $500 and $1,000 for his campaign. I don't have any problem with that. That's part of the political process and part of running for office. But when I get in office, I'm not going to owe those people anything. The person who owns uh, the, the Kaolin and and the airport, a hangar, and et cetera. I'm not, gonna, I'm not bought, nor am I bossed. And when I go into the legislature, I'm going to deal with all of those in the people, uh, individuals on a, on a level playing field. Mr. Williams, do you agree with Mr. Griffin's uh, assessment that your association with elites uh, might cause you difficulty uh, to kind of <coughs> help the lesser people out? No, and, and I don't call them elite. I call them friends. My father joined the Army when he was 15 years old because his father died and had 35 cents in his pocket. I come from roots. I put three children through college as a single parent. One of them went through Georgia College here and received two degrees. I'm not part of the elite. I don't drive a new Jaguar. I drive an old four Suburban. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, 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 not, I'm not part of the elite. Uh, but I have friends who create jobs, and I have the contacts with those people. The governor came to endorse me. He told the people he wanted to work with me, the Speaker of the House, the Lieutenant Governor. All I can say is 
out of 180 representatives in Atlanta, 160 of them are Republicans. So yeah, it's a Repub Republican controlled house right now. And if we want to get something done, we better send a Republican to Atlanta. And, and on top of that, there are some things that you can't get uh, 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 passed without the Democrats, and especially when it takes two thirds of the votes. Now, let me, you know, he kind of throwing a dig on the, on the fact that I drive a, 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 a Jaguar. I drive it because I can afford it. I have driven a, a Mercedes Benz. Look, I was in the military. I worked hard. I saved money. I retired as a full colonel. I'm a businessman, and I get paid not to work, but right, I work. So, we're so go ahead and wrap 